Hello, I'm and we're going to do some more books. Uh, I'll start with a small book about Graham Clark. Graham Clark is one of my favourite artists. No one in Malta will have heard of him, I'm sure. Um, and the artist often uses arch top pictures, and he often uses triptychs. Uh, in other words, sets of, sets of three pictures, which are framed separately, not hinged as a traditional triptych. The thing about this artist is he was an illustrator as well as uh, just a normal picture painter. And he, um, when I was a child in England, this sort of imagery was in, not only on painted pictures for the wall, it was in school books and it was in general information. It was in advertising. It was in civic, civic art. It was a sort of art that was widespread and there were more than one artist doing this sort of art. And if you look at the film Watership Down, you'll, you'll see not the, not not the same sort of not exactly the same flavour, but you'll see a very just distinctive form of painting from the 70s. So this artist is not well known, as I, as I said, and his works, his limited edition prints, are really really cheap. And um, the it, it's sort of an acquired taste because it's. Quite, it's quite a jovial, informal type of painting, and it's not terribly realistic, but it certainly gets the flavour across of rural England and coastal England. And uh, this book is going to go with, with the Graham Clark picture we have in Malt for Sale, which is an original picture, which is on the website, which I think is incredibly beautiful. Um, and um, it will help me sell the picture and it will help me get the, the best price for the picture because the person who buys the picture will get this book and then it will all mean so much to them when they're chatting about it with their friends or admirers of the picture when they buy it. They, they've got a story to go with, with the picture. It explains why it looks like it looks and it explains the value and things like that. What is remarkable about this book is I bought it in England from Abe, A-B-E. The book cost me one pound eighty, and the post cost me one pound. So that cost two pound two pounds eighty delivered. Uh, okay, we'll do the next one. This is another another Ben Nicholson book. I've been buying a lot of Ben Nicholson books. This one has a beautiful illustration photograph inside of his house, and it shows that he's really into. Uh, composition because everything's arranged so carefully you can see that he's obsessive about how things are displayed and you can see that in his pictures this is heli nahamad gallery you can see in his pictures he's lovely balanced compositions and he likes these ochre tones the smudged dirty look, looking finishes there's another image in here, which I thought was interesting. This one here. Now, there's a picture of a gallery exhibition. And he was living with Barbara Hepworth, who was a very famous artist. And he exhibited here in London at the Favre Gallery in April 1936. He exhibited jointly his own works by Nicholson. A Barbara Hepworth and a, Mon a Mondrian. I think that's a ra rather interesting photograph. It shows, shows he was extremely well connected, knew all the right people. And the book goes through various bits and pieces and it has photographs of objects from his house and it has a beautiful set of plates and it's another one of these books which is a useful reference for me. Beautiful quality book. I guess the book is 20 or 30 years old. Can't see the date on it. Next one, Modern Art Oxford. This is a recent book, 19, uh, sorry, 2016 or something like that. It cost me nine pounds from Oxfam, including post. Well, post is free because I paid the post once on another book and subsequent books with the same order are posted free. And this 
book, Modern Arts Oxford, is is straying slightly from what I would describe as as, as real art. Uh, it's got um, pictures of artworks in from a variety of artists, most of which I have never heard of, I don't want to hear of. It's got a timeline and it goes through up to fairly recently what they've been doing. And um, some of it's lovely, some of it's not. I, I, I think that when it gets into the, 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 the sort of area of what they describe as installations, I, I would suggest that means stunts, uh, artistic stunts. And I, I think that um, some of the stuff in here I think is, is not very good at all. But another generation perhaps will understand it better than me and like it, like it more than me. But it's nevertheless a reference point and um, of interest. So that's just one I picked up to look at. I don't really want to look at it anymore. Uh, we'll go back to a normal art book. This is a Rembrandt book. This is another one of these books from the, 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 the uh, range of books called The Gallery of Masterpieces, published by Hamish Hamilton in London and Amiot Dumont in Paris. This book is a large format book. It has a beautiful linen cover. It has a lovely clear title and it's about Rembrandt. And I've noticed in the other one we bought in this range, I will be trying to buy more from, from, from the range, that the um, plates, the pictures are extremely good. They're large, they're clear, and they have a lovely, a lovely uh, sheen on them. So in this book, there are a mountain of Rembrandt pictures which all have a fairly gentle finish to them and all are beautiful, beautiful pictures. There is at the back a self-portrait and there are a number of different self-portraits by this artist. So, so I think, again, it's because it's such a lovely book, that's why I bought it. This is a close-up of what appears to be a pregnant lady painted in that picture. This is some African individuals, which is unusual for an early painting. That's Rembrandt himself again. So it's, it's a, again, point of reference, lovely book, not too big. That one cost me £29.99, so it was a not cheap book. But I think, I think that's a, it's a great thing. I'll try and make up a set of those. We'll go to um, another, artist I like. This is Bosch. This is Hieronymus Bosch. And he was a Dutch painter from 1450, 15, 16. And he again, like Graham Clark, liked to paint triptychs. And the, the idea of a triptych is it traditionally was a religious format and you could fold it up like a book, slide it away and, and move it around. But these triptychs are uh, wide, widely were widely made, and you do see them nowadays in, with modern artists. Most triptychs are a split version of one large picture, most of them, but many of them also are three different pictures which don't necessarily go together, so you have a variety. So Hieronymus Bosch, and he was a surrealist artist. Now that one isn't too surrealist, it's, it's um, a religious picture with, with uh, angels and obviously Jesus. Once he gets into this book, that's a triptych in a lovely frame with hinges. You start to get to the uh, very surreal images. And Hieronymus Bosch is known for painting extremely spooky, surrealist, cruel, cruel pictures of hell and purgatory. And they are dis re really disturbing pictures. They are incredible pictures. And they are really warnings about what will happen to you if you are not good. Uh, they're not terribly 
some of the surrealist ones are not laced with religious iconography, but they do allude to death and suffering and mutilation and starvation and cruelty. So, so it's it's not you using the church as a, as a sort of particular badge, if you like. And there's lots of them, and they have a very strange, crazy quality. These pictures are 500 years old. And you will see in some of the pictures elements that crop up with more recent surrealists. And I'm thinking of, of Salvador, Salvador Dali. I used to like some, some of his stuff. But once I got more interested in this, this, this person, I decided that every, any, everything Saudi, sorry, Salvador Dali has done is slightly slight regurgitation of stuff that Hieronymus Bosch did 500 years before, so I'm not so sure I like him anymore. This is the Grim Reaper coming to collect a dying soldier. His arm is on the floor. There is a devil watching. There is a appears to be a devil taking a bag of gold off him. He's trying to buy, buy his life. Uh, there is an archangel as well, but who is trying to bargain something. So that one is very religious. This is another one, medieval. Strange image. You have this very medieval vegetation you tend to see on lots of pictures where they have a long trunk and all vegetation at the top. Uh, there's a lot of coding in there which I don't know about, which someone 500 years ago would Im immediately recognise. And everything would, will mean something, would, would have mean something. So that one will stop. We'll stop with him. Is Hieronymus Bosch. This is also from the Express Art Book range. We've bought a lot of them. And we're going to go through all these artists one by one next. Thank you.